All right, so do do we need to define what a prolonged massive disruption actually is? Stuff ain't working for a long time. <laughs> 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 You're listening to the Help Me with HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax, HIPAA help is on the way. Welcome to episode 355 of the Help Me with HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs, and joining me is Donna Grindle on location. <laughs> I am sequestered. Is that what it is? Yeah, that, well, that's the intent. I, yeah, I think I thought it was more like, you know, witness protection, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like that some days. You're in an undisclosed location. That's You know, that's what we have to do as business owners to get anything done. <laughs> we have to mm-hmm. run away to somewhere else so nobody knows where we are. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm fortunate I have college friends with lake houses is all I can say. Oh, And we'll leave go. it at that. All right, mm-hmm. so all you sleuths out there, <laughs> where in the world is Carmen Grindle? <laughs> uh, we don't know where that'll go next, but. <laughs> yep, yep. So uh, today we will be talking about a new document that came out, and um, it's it's about operational continuity. And it's a checklist for all you folks who love checklists. It's a checklist. <laughs> Yay. Until you see it. Until you see it. And then you'll be like, this this is not what I wanted. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I want three things on my checklist. That's all I want. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yep. yep. So we'll be talking about that. Uh, but first, before we do, just want to remind everybody, the Prysec Boot Camp is coming up in September. Make sure that you sign up for that. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be amazing. We're going to help you build your privacy and security program within your practice or business live and in person. Oh, yeah. There's going to be so much about it that's live and in person. It's it's a roll of the dice because we're going to try a whole bunch of cool things. Mm -hmm. And we're real excited about it. So by the time this comes out, there's going to be a ton of stuff on the website. Right, David? Absolutely. (laughs) When's this coming out? (laughs) Uh, we'll we'll leave it at that. There you go, folks. Yep. I just saw my to-do list fill up. (laughs) It's all on there, I think. So, (laughs) priceagbootcamp.com, folks. Go check it out and send us any questions you have because, I mean, everyone we're talking to, the, the one thing that I'm running out of when I go speak is the cards that give you information about Price Act Boot Camp. I mean, everybody's interested. Yep. So it's just a matter of time before the influx begins. Yeah. And it, and it is a, a limited seating thing. So, oh, you know, we, yeah. <laughs> the room will only hold X and we're not right. going to another room. It's, it's, it's key. Yep. So, but go check it out. And uh, until July 12th, early bird pricing. And if you're in, the Card and Club, or HIPAA for MSPs, you get even better pricing. Mm-hmm. So, go forth and prosper, my friends. <laughs> That's right. All right, so now we're going to do our HIPAA... Say what? ...segment. So, this one's kind of <laughs> funny. Um, no, it isn't, but it is. But it is Yeah, it's kind of like when you see a train wreck funny. <laughs> <laughs> so... I was talking to somebody this this past week, a doctor, and he, uh, I asked him, I said, is, is privacy and security important for you and your practice? Yes, absolutely it is, Mr. Sims. It's very important. Okay. <laughs> is is HIPAA compliance important to you? Is, yeah. Yes, HIPAA is important. And then he says, I'm pretty much a HIPAA expert. So I think we have this. I think we have, <laughs> I think we have this covered. Well, two things wrong with that sentence. HIPAA expert and you think you got it covered. Those are two red flags we always see. How many times have Mm -hmm. we said it on this podcast? When somebody's like, oh, I got HIPAA covered. You know, that's a red flag. (laughs) When you say you're a HIPAA expert and that's not your primary job, red flag. No, not likely. Um, 
in the next few sentences, he goes on to tell me three different ways in which he is violating HIPAA, in which he didn't know he was violating HIPAA. <laughs> <laughs> Until I was like, huh, you know, HIPAA says you can't do that. Oh. Uh, and then his response was, well, I'm sure we're not doing it perfectly. <laughs> but you're an expert. <laughs> so, but my point here is not that you don't know what you don't know, even though that's a point. My second point would be, be careful how quickly you can get to willful neglect should you tell somebody that you know to do right and you're choosing not to. Yes. I'm an expert in HIPAA, but I'm not doing everything I'm supposed to do. Yeah, that sounds like willful neglect. Yeah, sounds like willful neglect to me. Mm. <laughs> you might want to stay ignorant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't be so bold with your... Uh, your thoughts of uh, your own skills. And often, and I'm sure with this doctor, it's HIPAA hasn't changed since I learned about it. And there's nothing new for me to learn. Yeah. But mm -mm, no, that wrong. Yeah. Very <laughs> wrong. Very wrong. I mean, you know, we, met, we talk about this a lot too, where you and I spend all day, every day in this realm and we're still, you know, learning things and looking up things and there's guidance that is coming out all the time. There's no way possible that you're a doctor doing all the things that doctors have to do to stay up to date on what, what their primary function is as a mm -hmm. surgeon or whatever. You, there's no way you can do all that and be proficient in HIPAA. Just not, it's not possible. <laughs> I, 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 there, it's a possibility, but it's so remote. We're going to say it's statistically unlikely. Yeah. Cause you know, I have to be that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is possible. Some people are smarter than me. <laughs> I can't imagine it, but no, yeah. the likelihood is remote. So it's kind of like, you know, when you do a risk analysis, the likelihood that you're an expert is remote, <laughs> which <laughs> means, and the impact is massive. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah. Well, it's like, okay, I'm not an expert in woodworking. I can build a birdhouse. I can't build a real house. <laughs> I can only build a birdhouse if they give me a kit, and then <laughs> it might not stand upright. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there's, there's, as they say in the fighting world, there's levels to this, man. There's levels to this. <laughs> there you go, Mr. Sims. <laughs> yeah. You, you learn that when, you know, when you have these people come into the ring and they're fighting and somebody just completely just annihilates them. And they're like, okay, they're, that guy's clearly on a different level of skill. <laughs> 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 it's the same way in, in HIPAA and risk management. There's different levels of, of being able to understand this and to do it. Uh, Absolutely. And, and a lot of those people are still at that level from back in the day when HIPAA had no teeth. Mm. <laughs> it was like grandma uh. running around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, a Pete. So, but also the thing is, you know, one of the things I do, and I've been doing conference speaking uh, recently, several sessions, and one of the things I show them is the amount of malware, just the amount of malware that we defend against is in 2008, let's call it 2009. It go to 2012, right? Mm -hmm. The number of malware being tracked, you know, is uh, millions. We crossed over a billion, what, 2020, 2021. We're over a billion now. Mm. And, uh, and all of that still has to be tracked. So to think that what you were doing then will protect you today because you are an expert then, even if you knew it then, it, you know, and we're not saying <laughs> that this particular example, they actually knew it because they're not doing it. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I tell people all the time, if, if you haven't changed your, how you're addressing security from just five years ago, if you're not mm -hmm. doing anything different, and, and there's a lot of people that aren't, then you're in a bad situation. Oh, and big time. I, all the time I go into 
prospects and, and other businesses. And I, and I'm, you know, they're still running just an antivirus, something off the <laughs> shelf somewhere. I'm like, that, yeah, you know, that is no longer, <laughs> that <laughs> is no longer good enough. And, you know, I, it, it might make you feel good, but it ain't going to work very well. <laughs> um, and the, the other piece of it too, is the number of people that don't understand security is way beyond a technical issue because no matter how much security you have, it's not going to stop you from picking up the phone and calling the bad guys and saying, come on in. Oh, good Lord. Yes. <laughs> I'm d- <laughs> You just taunt me with that one. Let's don't go any further. Let's move along. <laughs> you know, let me just say this. If you need help loading a print driver, don't Google for support to call to load a print driver. Please don't do that. Yeah. We'll move on now. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, so I can't face whoever, it anymore. Whoever your IT provider is, whether it's in-house or otherwise, go through your IT Yes. Do, let them do it. I don't care if it's on a Sunday at three o'clock in the morning. You either, either need to wait, mm-hmm. <laughs> or you need to, you know, get somebody on the phone or whatever. But don't don't try to figure it out yourself. And don't. It's something as simple as installing a printer. I can't tell you how many times we've blocked these downloads that people go to the website. That's like some kind of driverupdate.com thing or whatever. And mm-hmm. they try to install this driver, and the driver, uh, which is not a driver. But they try to run this thing that's absolutely malware because, mm-hmm. you know, the criminals are super smart about how they do this. They know if they bundle the malware mm-hmm. inside something that you think you're using to set up your printer, then there you go. It's easy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's it's, it's a, a weather app, right? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. They torture. And, you All know, right. your, your security says, wait a minute, this is malicious. And you're like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's a driver. It's a print driver. I know what I'm doing. And then you just let it on. <laughs> all right. Moving right along. Based on all that, there are some smart folks uh, from the Healthcare and Public Health Sector Coordinating Council who have put together an operational continuity for cyber incidents guide. Yeah. And, uh, so let's just to make things more complicated but less complicated is 405D is a tiny little piece of the health sector coordinating council. So this is our 405D tip of the week because it's part of the bigger group, which you were on at one point and you're like, I got too many things. I'm out. I'm out. Yep. Juggling too many balls. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, they're, they're, they're merging a lot of these things together. And so it's, you know, it's getting, it's getting complicated in some areas and easier in other areas. So the good news is there's a lot of work going on. There's a lot of work going on. And, you know, uh, from a government standpoint, there's these groups that are saying, let's work together. No, I don't want to work with you. Yes, you have to work with me. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, but yeah, that, there's a, it, 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 there's so many different groups. When I sat in on the the coordinating council all hands meeting to see just how many different things are going on between medical devices, working with the FDA and the cyber people and all the public private partnership that is coordinated under the coordinating council. It's amazing how much is happening out there and the things that are planned and, and the work that's being done by volunteers. Yeah. I mean, it, we're volunteers when we're doing this. And to some people, you know, volunteering one thing. To David and I, that means we're not making any money. <laughs> <laughs> so David and I are out here with all these other folks, and there's amazing stuff being done. So that's why we're trying to get everybody to see what's there. Because how do you educate everybody when you're building all these things? And uh, people don't know they're there because they're yeah. experts. They don't need to look at it. <laughs> yeah, I, asked, I, I was at the state capitol for South Carolina last week and was talking to our senator and also our guy from the House of Representatives. And I asked them both, I said, does South Carolina have anything coming along the lines of a 
Privacy or Security Protection Act type thing. And both of them said, no, we're waiting on the federal government to do it. <laughs> so, there you go. So here you there go. You go. Um, so, not and, 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 but we both know, it, I mean, we've talked about that a bazillion times. So that's why we're focusing on real world things that can help the industry get things done that is readily available for everybody to use and be on the same page. Yep. And this does fall under the health industry cybersecurity, which is the HIC. So, you know, we're all about HIC. <laughs> it's a HIC. <laughs> all right, let's dive in. This, and matter of fact, this is fresh off the press, like just came out. Yeah, it is official. Uh, so uh, just released for May 2022, which we are actually recording May 2022. We're not behind on at least this thing. Hey. Yeah. So, Only because at the last minute I saw it this morning. But let's go on. <laughs> yeah, because it just came out. Um, the <laughs> PDF is still hot. So, <laughs> <laughs> Ink's still wet. It I ain't know. even dried yet. Ink's still wet on the PDF. <laughs> um, so before we dive into this, uh, they do make a point to say that the checklist is intended to provide a flexible template for your staff and executive management to be able to respond to and recover from an extended outage due to a serious cyber attack. And as we get into it, you're going to find out there's different roles. And whether you have enough people for the roles, you're going to have to have the roles filled by somebody. So in some <laughs> cases, as you're listening, you may go, well, we don't have anybody to do that. Well, you may have to assign you know, one person to two or more roles. But these are things that have to happen because it's part of the process. Yeah, you know, at the big level, small level, there's uh, there's a lot of continuity. Speaking of that, the official name of this document, because, <laughs> you know, Health Industry Cybersecurity, heck, Operational Continuity Cyber Incident, OC, OC, HIC OC. <laughs> HIC OC. <laughs> HIC OC. <laughs> oh, geez. You know, it is interesting. We hear all the time in the IT world about business continuity. I mean, that's, you know, we've been talking about it a lot. So this is different. This is talking about operational continuity, which I don't, I don't know yet if it's the same term, different word, you know, same meaning. I don't know. We'll, it we'll is. Get into it. They, you know, there's all these new things that we're supposed to learn to say, like, what is it? Uh, HDO, Healthcare Delivery Organization. That just makes it so much easier than saying provider, hospital, blah, blah, blah. It's HDO. They're delivering healthcare. All right. So. Uh, they do uh, also say this is a living document. Now, I like when they say this because this goes to tell the people, the stakeholders, <laughs> that, you know, you've got to tweak this document based on what is reasonable and appropriate in your environment. And, you know, also what, what do you have available to you? And it's not, so living means it's not static, which means that you should constantly review it and update it with new information. Mm -hmm. And we all know that one of the key elements of an incident response plan is a post-mortem review after the stake's in the ground and it's done. Let's evaluate what we're going to do differently. So... What went well, what didn't go well, what are we going to change? That's why it's a living document. Mm -hmm. So they do call it the, because there's a lot of words. There you go. It's a response guideline for cybersecurity technology system prolonged massive disruption or outage. <laughs> yeah. And so, that, so this is all the things that should happen in the first 12 hours, mm -hmm. 12. So the immediate crisis moment, keep, <laughs> keep that in mind as we go through all these things, 12 hours. Yeah. <laughs> and I do like the way they did it by role. So the, you know, you, here, let's group all of these things instead of cramming them all. Cause there's a lot of stuff that has to happen at the same time. Yeah. So there you go. All right, so do do we need to define what a prolonged massive disruption actually is? Stuff ain't working for a long time. <laughs> 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 yeah, so uh, according to the document, they say that it has to meet or it 
you know, potentially will meet any of the following three things. One, patient safety and or member services are impacted. Okay. Mm -hmm. Large scale clinical workflow, patient care and or member services is impacted. And the last one is implementation of preventative defenses that could impact clinical workflow. So basically, you ain't getting nothing done. <laughs> Isn't that what I said? Yeah. <laughs> yep. But, uh, you know, patient safety is one of the things we talk about all the time. So mm-hmm. if any of those three, not all three, but any of those three. So that's whenever you have to kick, kick into this guide. And, and it starts with the first role being the incident commander. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> I know. I just picture somebody jumping out with a cape. I'm the instant commander. <laughs> there you go. And so the the they do make a point of saying that you got all these roles and you activate the different roles as you need them, and anything that you choose not to activate, that still falls back to the commander to deal with. Mm-hmm. So it's not like we don't need that. It's we only need this one piece. So the commander's going to make that happen. Right. Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. The role of the incident commander, David. Yeah. The, the, this person's going to provide overall strategic direction on all site specific response actions and activities. So you are the conductor of this train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> And you got to figure out what's going on, who do you need, where do you need them, all of those things. So that that's the first step in yeah. the checklist. This is the person that doesn't assume anything. No, because the wreck is going to get way worse the minute you do that. Yeah. Or if you way do want worse. to assume things, then you assume the worst. <laughs> no, you don't assume the best. You don't assume somebody else has got it covered. Yeah, You know, it's one of those things where you assume there's a breach until you can prove otherwise, things mm-hmm. like that. So the, the step one, identify the scope and situational awareness, which yeah. seems to be a problem for many people, situational <laughs> awareness. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> but it's, it's uh, number one, uno, numero, the... For the most part, if you don't do that step to say, how bad is this? There are things you only know at that moment, and you may expand the scope later. But if you don't deal with all the things you know at that moment and understand it, there's going to be a bomb hidden somewhere that will, you know, not a literal one, but a figurative, Mm -hmm. something's going to blow and so you've got to take that time to be aware of what's going on, what's happening in the next 12 hours, where are all of my people, what do you mean the key individual that we count on is in Fiji, where I would love to be at that moment. So, <laughs> Yeah. One thing to, to keep in mind is that when you identify the scope, as the instant commander, realize that the scope almost always is more than it originally seems. It, it, it's yes. big. It's a bigger impact site <laughs> than you originally thought. So uh, just know that going in, that it, whatever you think it is now, it's likely going to be a lot bigger than that as more information comes in. Well, and that gets to terms that we're using when it comes to these things. You got left a boom and right a boom. Mm-hmm. And blast radius. So left a boom before you knew. Yeah. Before it happened. And then boom. <laughs> and then boom. Blast radius is how far has the boom gone? And right a boom is everything that happens after that. Yep. So needless to say, there's a lot to maintain situal awareness on situ situ. Situal awareness? Situ. <laughs> situ. <laughs> well, we gotta do it at least once or twice every episode. I am a little bit bad day. <laughs> okay, so maintaining situational awareness is an <laughs> ongoing process. We'll try that. Okay, now I love the, the, the next things that they accept by putting in here, because we've talked about this before. It, establish a cadence and process for coordination with IS slash IT 
in cybersecurity. There's oh, a lot so of there's a <laughs> lot of things that are stated in that one sentence. Mm-hmm. And this is step number two. You know, consider command center coordination, unified command based on organizational structure, but establishing a cadence and who's in charge, but coordinating IT and cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. And those are not the same. What's the difference, David? Um, Oftentimes, IT are keeping your systems up and going. They're, you know, making sure you can print. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, um, they're doing the help desk stuff and you know all that. Uh, but true cybersecurity is, you know, the 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 defenses. They're keeping everything protected and all that good stuff. You know, they're the ones dealing with the attack, and IT is helping them, or IT is out there trying to stand up a a wireless hotspot so that you can still be running in the cloud, and and they're doing that work. Mm-hmm. While cybersecurity is dealing with the active issue, yeah, and and this and they need to be separate. And if you're in a small organization, sometimes the same vendor might do both. But you need to vet them out for this before something happens, because yeah. I see a lot of times where the IT vendor might be fantastic with IT, but he doesn't know the process that he needs to follow for healthcare, and so mm-hmm. a ransomware attack happens, they destroy all the evidence because it's all about, you know, getting operations back up and going. They don't, they're not looking at it from a cybersecurity incident response uh, lens. Yes. So they're HIPAA experts. So uh, (laughs) there is that. (laughs) So, but then they point out, activate applicable continuity and downtime plans, but make this note. If plans do not exist, (laughs) (laughs) or are not functional rapidly identify critical services and create a plan to continue and sustain services. So doing it on the fly. Yeah. Changing the tires on the moving vehicle. Oh yeah. I forgot we say that, but yeah, that there you go. That the let's do it on the fly. So kind of they're hinting there. Have a plan. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Or it's like the planes that refuel in the air. <laughs> now, that is cool. It I've is gotten cool. to watch that from a, a, a commercial jet, and the pilot comes on and goes, y'all are going to get to see something not everybody gets to see. Look out, you know, and, and there they are. And they, watching that jet come up and connect and fuel, and then look, it was cool. <laughs> it was really cool. You know, I'm like glued to the window. <gasps> <laughs> Everybody else is like, yeah, it's two planes. Oh. <laughs> All right, number four. Yeah, number four. Communicate activation of downtime plans. <laughs> Mass notification systems. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody, we're down. <laughs> yeah, that's when you cup your hands. <laughs> Hurry. <Yes. laughs> There's a problem. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, you know, I have friends that have megaphones to get out when there's a party to get everybody's attention. They literally get the megaphone out. We can try that. Uh, Five, and we're still on the incident commander now. The the, the one where all the stuff rolls downhill. (laughs) Approve recommendations from operations relative to what do we need to bring up? What do we need to shut down? How do we make everything work? So operations is not necessarily IT or mm-hmm. cybersecurity. In fact, they make a point of not calling it IT and cybersecurity. Yep. I love the fact that so many people, when you say, what do you do? What's on your incident response, <laughs> response plan? IT handles that. I just, <laughs> I just had uh, a client emailed me last week <laughs> and said, do we have an incident response plan? And I was like, why are you asking me? <laughs> I don't know. Do you have an incident response plan? Uh, oh, but yeah. It, that hurts. 
it comes it's painful. From, yeah, it came from some kind of assessment, you know, like cybersecurity insurance probably assessment, and asked them the question. Then they asked me, "Do we have an?" I don't know. Do you? I mean, if something happens in your business, I'm only a small part of that. I don't know what your instant response plan is. I know what mine is. I don't know what yours is. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we're still in the first 12 hours. The one that is in charge still having to do all of these things. Uh, where are we? We're uh, at number six. six. Yep. What yep. is that one? Oh, that's a, the address incident need by activating additional resources. So yeah, if you don't have enough people there uh, to handle things and, and get them in there, <laughs> all hands right. on deck. Yes. Make it happen. And that's that activating the different people. And if you choose not to activate things, remember, somebody better make sure it's still being addressed and doesn't need to be changed. Yeah. And another thing you need to do here is hopefully you've already have a list of vendors or other resources that are outsourced or third party. You've already got their contact information and hopefully you're already reaching out to them. I mean, incident commander should be the person reaching out to these folks even if it's just to say, we want to put you on standby. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is happening right now. We will let you know as we know more. But uh, you should already have that information. If you're looking for that during the incident, that's a bad time to, to start right. that process. That's you know, one of the key elements of your plan is just like a phone book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, who knows what and where can I get them? Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, it's uh, it's like one of the sessions, and I, you know, you learn things when you do. I do a, I did a session with one of our clients who'd been through a cyber attack, and when he's presenting what happened, we're we're talking about the exact same thing, mm -hmm. but his perspective was it kind of was like, wow, I you know, I I don't see it that way. I, you're absolutely right. But I didn't think about it through that lens. Mm -hmm. And he's telling them, he's like, you know, there's a reason our incident response plan, yes, I have to make all the business decisions. That's my job. I have the IT people. I have all of these things. But you know what? And he calls it white hat hackers because, you know. But I don't know any, but she's got them on speed dial. I don't know anybody that does... PR that can help me realize I have to do my internal communications, my external communications, my patient communications, all of these different things, and help me make sure I'm saying everything that needs to be said properly. She knows them. I don't know them. Mm -hmm. She knows the attorneys to call. I know our attorney who says, not my gig. She knows I better talk to my insurance and reminds me what to do. She gives me all the things that I need to decide and then tells me, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. Here, Here's all the information so that I can make an informed decision. And I'm like, yeah, I would have told him that's what I do. <laughs> but to look at it through his lens of, I wouldn't even know who to call. But that's why I have them. And they have a list that's in our plan. And not only is it there, but they help me make those calls. Right. So it, it was really interesting, his uh, perspective on the whole thing uh, and the way that everything happened in his viewpoint. Yeah, it was the same event, but he's the incident commander. I'm his advisor. And I, and I got people. Yeah. <laughs> I know people. <laughs> so, <laughs> and number seven, this is, you know, it's, it's different if you're in a medium or large organization than a small, but you definitely mm -hmm. need to understand how what happened is now impacting upstream and downstream partners. And so, mm -hmm. obviously, if you're in a hospital system and you have smaller providers that are connecting to you, how does that uh, impact them? Other health systems that it might impact. Is it going to impact community partners like uh, like the EMS system in your area and things like that? Uh, so just you know how how do all these things connect? And and I know from a small provider standpoint, it is very challenging to for people to understand how things are connected. 
<laughs> True. Yeah, you think you're you're just this little piece. And the other thing that we should really point out here is from a you don't need to be a, a, you don't have to be a healthcare facility to utilize this tool because what was it? What country is it? Six hours, four hours of notifications that you just sent me in the uh, news? India. In India. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you need to notify people that you have an ongoing attack. And all these folks that want to spend 60 days before I let you know, mm -mm, no, you need to let me know there's an attack going on. And more and more, we're seeing the health systems and, and, and those folks say, let's make sure our downstream is letting us know what's going on when they have an incident. Yeah. So you need to make sure this is on your list if you're downstream is that you've got to have that ongoing communications. Yep. Not like we'll we'll get back to you when we know something. <laughs> that silence is deafening. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So we are done with the incident command. No, no, we got one more. Oh, we got one more. Oh, that's right, that's right. Got to have got to have some more meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's established the cadence for the ongoing impact assessment and briefing. So, yeah, it's 12 hours that this plan is, but it ain't lasting just 12 hours. Mm -mm. But in the first 12 hours, you need to have a plan for your ongoing discussions. Yeah. yeah like just every, go ahead and set hour. a plan. <laughs> every hour we're having a five-minute meeting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even – even <laughs> yeah, <woo>. uh, <laughs> that does happen sometimes. But, you know, even in a smaller environment, I've tried to do it like, okay, everybody needs to get together, and then you got to herd the cats, right? Mm -hmm. You're Even in a small environment, you're better off putting a, a plan. Okay, we're all going to get back together at this time. We're all going to get back together at this time. No matter the size of the organization, you're much better off doing that. Yep. All right. So, look, David. We have made it just through the role of the commander. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have. But, you, you know, some of the other ones are, are a little smaller in, in yeah, scope. Yeah, well, they're not as intense. No. All right, so we'll jump over to the next role, which is the medical-technical specialist. So it's the, the subject matter expert, the advisor. It, you know, could be Cardin, as a matter of fact. You know, <laughs> not, not saying, but just saying. Card yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, so the subject matter experts, they advise the incident commander or section chief on issues related to response. Mm -hmm. So I was working on that segue before I noticed number eight. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> that is the whole thing because it's so complex. And you need to have somebody that's clinical, medical, to handle what do we do to impact the workflow, the patients, the, all of those parts, and then the technical pieces of it. So there's three groupings of the subject matter experts, SMEs. And notice none of them say HIPAA. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, it's like privacy and security. You know, something you'd learn at like maybe a prostate boot camp. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so number one, cybersecurity. So you got to have that person that is advising and identifying, and and it's their job to figure out what's impacted. And so, you know, for for what we do, you know, we have those cybersecurity experts, and we bring them in, and and. I communicate with them on so many different things. We have the relationships built, and and that was one of the key things that um, the the guy from Vermont Medical Center that he said the one thing he wished he had known before they had a major attack was to build the relationships in advance, mm. so that you know all of these things, so that there's a great deal of value to know everybody knows how to communicate with each other and that this is my SME area. So there you go. Know it. You got to know who to call. You know, I got somebody. 
Yeah. I got, I got some phone numbers, email addresses. H- have some uh, coffee before. <laughs> have a coffee date before that happens. <laughs> yeah. At least, you know, so that when you call, you're not like, so how you doing? <laughs> yeah. Well, what, oftentimes what happens, at least in my world, is they call that person and it's like, okay, well, we don't know who you are because you didn't decide to engage our services until you, you know, everything was on fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and you, you know, you got to go through the process of trying to get them set up as a client and all that. And I mean, they're basically just kicking your door in and saying, screaming, help me. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> help you what? Who are you? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So there's only so much that anybody can do when you're still trying to figure out who's who, Mm -hmm. right? You don't want to figure out who's who. You want to know, I already know who I need to talk to about all these different things, and I know their skill set. I know their name. I know how to get in touch with them. I'm not waiting three or four people referring me in. So Mm -hmm. hugely important. Then you have your subject matter experts in that other stuff, which it still doesn't mention HIPAA, but this is where it falls. When we tell people that on your incident response plan, you need to have somebody that's managing your privacy and security (laughs) compliance while you're doing all this stuff on the fly, they're like, isn't that what we're doing? No, (laughs) no. (laughs) <laughs> Somebody's got to be documenting what's going on, keeping up with what's happening. So, you know, all of these things need to be happening. And that's your risk management, regulatory, compliance, legal, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Who, yes. Yeah. This person is, you know, well, it's what you do. But, yeah, they're looking at things, you know, all the darts and bullets that are coming at you. Pew, 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 like Wonder Woman. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> and you, yep, and you're running back to the incident commander and talking about all the changes that are happening. You know, immediately you're looking at your the programs that are in place, like your loss prevention and your risk management and how everything's responding. And you know, do we need to activate the cyber insurance policies and procedures? And what other policies and procedures do we need to activate? And what about any kind of extortion components that might be there? You know, like somebody getting ransomware monies <laughs> you know, what about digital forensics instant response do we need to get those activated what about invoices for uh for, for non-cyber related claims and getting that process started Re- you know, other reporting requirements document 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 <laughs> do you yes. have to n- notify any other regulatory agencies i mean just all these things that have to be done that fall under the, the uh, regulatory and compliance risk management piece of it. Yeah. So the good news is for small folks, you know, we're able to do those first two, but that third one, I got nothing. I I got nothing. <laughs> nothing, honey. Nothing. <laughs> uh, this goes yeah. back to the doctors yeah. and the clinicians and all of their job, you know, stay in that lane because that lane that is a very narrow area and we need people that'll stay there and not mm-hmm. go try to fix the printer. Yeah. Yeah. So in, in this area, we're talking about, you know, clinical uh, leadership and safety and quality care. So they're, this person is going to advise on issues with, you know, ethical implications and they're going to understand and communicate clinical impacts to inform waivers and contingency care and crisis standards and care activation and all these other things yeah. that have to do with all that. So it's very different than the person who's doing the, the regulatory and compliance piece of it. Yeah. It's not even, you know, in this, I mean, the, if you want to go back and just listen to our episode where the patients are freaking out about their records during the Scripps incident. Okay. Mm -hmm. These patients think that you have dropped off a cliff and no one's worried about my care. Yeah. No one's coordinating uh, being able to get the medical staff available and get them on the phone and do telehealth and do, you know, it's just, oh, well, somebody go over there and reschedule everybody. What about the patient? Because, again, that's the whole reason you're in business for the healthcare for the uh, HDOs, but then for the other folks 
uh, the the business partners like us, we need to make sure that all of those HDOs know what's going on so that they can do their job. Mm -hmm. And if we're not communicating with them effectively, they're not able to manage the care. And we get back to it's about patient care and patient safety in the end. Mm -hmm. So having the ability to treat people and they make sure that they list things. And this is what really gets back to the point Consider special populations, pediatrics, transplant patients, behavioral medicine. And we really learned a lot about cancer center and all of those things. I mean, these are, you're, you've got people in real world complicated situations. It's not about you. It's about them. Right. Well, we won't have time to to dive deep into the rest of the document, but we do want to give a uh, a 30,000 foot view of it and, and the other roles. So the, the mm -hmm. next role is your public information officer. And, uh, and so this person's going to serve as the, the conduit of information. So, <laughs> you know, tell everybody, don't say anything to anybody unless it goes through the public information. As a matter of fact, the public information officer is probably be the one telling people anything yeah. when, when it comes to what's happening. Otherwise <laughs> you have people on social media telling people mm -hmm. stuff. That people are telling the news media stuff. <laughs> They're oh. telling patient stuff. They're doing it on social media. They're doing it when they walk in the door. Oh, I'm sorry. We're down right now. We have an active ransomware attack. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> or, yeah, or they don't know the difference between an incident and a breach. We have a breach, which is very different than we're having an active incident right now. Yeah. So you'll have to tell everybody that, you know, when somebody calls, because the news outlets are going to be calling. You know, tell me what's oh, yeah. going on. Tell me what's going on. And you have to say, I'm sorry, I have to refer you to our public information officer. So send that So send that to them. They have to develop all the communications that are going external and, um, and, and making sure that they're also following <laughs> a lots, lots of rules. And, um, yeah. and then the next one is your liaison person, different, different than your public information officer. So, this is a function as a like an incident contact for the command center for representatives from from other agencies, and so this is yes. the person that's running back and forth between your agency and other agencies, uh, and letting them know what's going on. They're doing the coordination of the external partner communications. Yeah, and that's the part that if you let that fall through, then they start figuring, oh well, I heard from so and so and such and such and. You know, it, 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 that's what keeps the big picture rolling. It's so important. But next, you get the safety officer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, you know, while everybody's running around with their hair on fire, somebody's got to be <laughs> putting the fires out. Yeah, um, I mean, this covers a lot of area when you're in a healthcare environment. Yeah, yeah. And it, I mean, everybody should should know a little bit about what this feel like feels like over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. you know, that's the, but the okay. safety officer is identifying him, you know, the things that are safety risks, risk to patients, risk to staff, risk to visitors. And, you know, how are they going to deal with all that? Well, yeah, one of our favorite little tales that we tell is clients, you know, we, we work on all kinds of incidents like fire and, you know, bomb threats as well as floods and cyber attacks, right? And this one site had a, a lobby full of patients and they were in a medical staff, you know, like a building that had a lot and they have a fire drill. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you got the lobbies full of visitors and patients. The front office staff picked up their phone, their purses and ran. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, it, they were gone. Fire drill. <laughs> peace out. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. That's like when I'm, when I'm sitting on at the wing on a plane, they're like, do you agree to help people? Should we have an incident? I'm like, yeah, I agree to help people. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all know you'd be the one you talk big. I, I agree to get the door open quickly. <laughs> Anything after that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big talker, isn't he folks? 
Yeah, I'd be the yeah. one that ends up dying helping everybody else get out. <laughs> You'd be cussing them out because they ain't moving fast enough. Yeah. There you go. We, we already heard the story about you, the shark and you basically <laughs> running across the water and leaving your wife standing there. I sure did, we, boy. <laughs> That was without even thinking, you know, it was just like, oh, yeah. I just ran and left her. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't know why. <laughs> there is something about, you know, survival that, you know, you don't really plan for. <laughs> Kicks in, babe. Kicks it in. Does. Self-preservation is a powerful thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's knock out these last few rules. Ro- ro- rolls. Roll, baby. Rolling, rolling, rolling. rolling. Yeah. All right. Uh, where are we? Operations section chief. Yep. That's right. So uh, get your headdress out, put it on. You are now the operations section chief. <laughs> <laughs> and, you yeah, say, yeah. <laughs> and you throw your right hand up and go, how? <laughs> oh, no. Here we go. <laughs> Took him down the wrong path. <sighs> okay. So develop and recommend strategies and tactics to continue clinical and non-clinical operations for the duration of the incident response and recovery. Mm -hmm. And this is the one where I say to people, if you're not, even if you go to paper and you're, that works out, how are you going to submit claims? And they're all like, uh, so you go two weeks without submitting any volume of claims. And even in a small practice, cash is gone, gone. Mm -hmm. So you've got to figure out the clinical stuff, yeah, but you also got to figure out keeping the business up and running, being able to pay your staff, being able to activate and 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 you know write a check when you need to. There's a lot to that. So you got to have a plan for both, and and the business continuity plans fall into place there. Mm-hmm. So this is again the incident. And then you got the business continuity and disaster recovery, and they all work together. All right, where we are next? We uh, we're down to the planning section chief. We just did the operations section chief. All right. So now this is the seventh role. Seven. We're not done yet. We better get done soon. <laughs> the uh, planning section. You know, so to me, all of these start blending together because, you know, it's written for the large and then you shrink it down. Because, mm-hmm. again, all this has to happen. But the uh, incident related documentation regarding incident operations and resource management. So the long range planning and the planning meetings and having that actual plan in place so that you know how long can I operate this way? How long can I operate this way? You know, where do I draw this line and those lines as far as keeping things up and running? And that gets back to things like, how long can I operate using just paper? How long can I operate without having any kind of uh, money coming in or any of those things? And who's going to follow up and make sure we have the documentation? Who's going to make sure that everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing? That's kind of like that person's job, yep. at least in my opinion. <laughs> and that's all that matters. <laughs> right now it does, right? All right. We got uh, the three more chiefs here. So uh, right. the Hit it. last three are financial uh, section chief. So making sure that uh, there's money there for financial expenditures and Cutting checks and supervising the documentation of expenditures and cost reimbursement Cre- activities. <laughs> credit cards, being able to get the credit card to buy equipment that we may need on the fly, those kind of things. Yep. So how are you going to pay for stuff? Next one, logistics section chief. So that's the person that's going to you know, direct the service and support activities needed to ensure you got uh, the materials you needed for Site response to to the incident that's happening, you know what what disruptions to a critical infrastructure and the priority of those services. So you know what are the, the the logistics around making all these things work. You've got things some some organizations have to make sure that they have food and hydration 
uh, for patients uh, and staff and visitors. And yeah, because you got these people working nonstop for twelve days. Mm-hmm. You got to feed them. They got to sleep. You got to hydrate them. They're under high stress. You yeah. got to take care of them. Yeah, this this is the person that makes sure you have batteries for all the flashlights. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Indeed. And then the and there's a lot more to these roles, so you have to go back and read the the document yourself. But then the last one, the very last, and certainly the most important. No, 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 no. what? No, the what? last one? Uh, no, you're right. That's what I thought. Sorry. Say that again. Uh all right. So I, the la- <laughs> So the last one is your uh your intelligence uh section chief, which is IS and IT, you know, mm-hmm. so uh, they are providing the technical response, uh, making sure you have continuity of business and you have recovery uh, recommendations given. So how to get things back up and running. And they actually work with cybersecurity. So, okay. Mm-hmm. To inform about the uh, instant response decisions and activities, you know, they're like, Hey, if you do this and then there's this other thing over here and this is how the, how the systems connect together and we have to have this one up and running to make this over here function. You know, so a lot of, a lot of things around the, the med tech stuff. So all your, all your IT functionalities. Yeah. It's, it's helping track the scope and the progress from a big picture standpoint with the technology and making sure that everybody has what they need Mm -hmm. and everybody understands the timeline but you know you you have to have a certain amount of technical knowledge you have to have the ability to make decisions on okay we've got a couple of different ways that we can go about getting around uh, bringing this thing back up around the incident so let's work out what all our options are about when do we bring the this back online and that back online. So somebody's got to manage all of that stuff. Yeah. This is where knowing the IT infrastructure is very important because you're not trying to figure that out on the fly. How are things connected? Right. I mean, it's you've seen the closets before where you've got 400 wires all hanging out of the ceiling and plugged into stuff and nobody knows yeah. where anything goes. <laughs> yeah. It's torture, but yeah. <laughs> all right. Yes. That, that's it. In a 12 nutshell. hours. 12 yeah. hours. You got 12 hours to do all that. Yeah. So, TikTok. Uh, <laughs> but go check out that document. We have links to it in the show notes. There is a lot more there that we had to skip over, but it's it's essentially like a checklist. If nothing else, it gives you a lot of things to look at and say, oh, I didn't consider that. Oh, we definitely need this. Well, we don't maybe don't need that. Well, we need these roles in place. Who's doing this? Who's doing that? I mean, it, mm-hmm. it should give you tons of information for making sure you have all these things together. This is not one of these things you pull out of the drawer when something happens and go, okay, follow this list. Nah, because there may be like, what does that mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> does anybody know anybody that knows blah, 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 blah? <laughs> yeah. So th- this is one of those things where as you're creating your incident response plan, you should mm-hmm. be going through this and going, oh, okay, I can see how this works and where this fits in and who needs to do this and where is this information? Who are these vendors? How are we going to respond to this? That's what this document is really, really good for. So we hopefully have given you the big picture and then shown you how much there is to drill down. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it go is, get uh, this doc. We'll it. have a link to it. We'll have a link to it on the show notes. You can get it at the website. If you're in the Cardin Club, hit for MSPs. This will be on uh, the portal where all of your resources are in one place. Tenfold. All right, folks, thanks for listening. That's our show for today. And remember, for Donna and myself, HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims, the show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.